Good morning. Today we look at uh, Port, uh, Jeremiah 48 and 49, and they're both uh, fairly long chapters, and both of them hold pretty much bad news for different countries in the, you know, in the Mideast there in that area. And it, chapter 48 spends most of its time talking about Moab, and uh, the Moabites uh, were. Uh, a neighboring country, uh, they sometimes occupied occupied part of Judah. It was the Moabite women at one point in time that caused the Jewish men, the Israelite men, to sin. But you know, but on the flip side, they caused that. You know, it's, it works both ways. You can't just blame one party anyway. But you know, it, it, concerning Moab, it says, "Thus says the Lord of hosts: Alas for Nebo, for it is laid waste." And and in it, you know, and another town is put to shame for it's taken. Its fortress is broken down, and the renown of Moab is no more. I mean, Moab was a, a country that had some power and 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 some respect, but um, you know, God had seen fit for you know these countries all to all to have the same punishment, or the same result, I guess, maybe of the war. That you know, King Nebuchadnezzar would would come in and and basically you know destroy them all and rule them all and, and conquer, and and so it just, it goes on and it continues to you know uh, mention different towns and stuff and you know in, in verse two it says oh you also oh madman shall be brought to silence you know and and sometimes you know, when you hear you know people rant and rave and, and that, you know, but, you know, uh, their voices will be silent, you know, the 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 ones that are most outspoken and, and there won't be, you know, or maybe the braggarts you maybe, maybe want to say, but, you know, that, you know, it, it goes on in verse four, Moab is destroyed and they go up and they weep bitter, bitterly, you know, and, and it says, flee, save yourselves, you know, and, and run and run and hide because your strongholds will be taken and, you know, the, the, it won't make any difference what their armies are or how many men they put up against Nebuchadnezzar's men. Uh, they will be destroyed. The destroyer will come to every town and no town shall escape, it says in verse 8. So, again, here's this whole country, this whole land that is going to be um, taken captive and made desolate. It says her towns will become a desolation with no inhabitants in them, you know, and they, they they not only conquer but they take the people captive and and you know send them back to be to be slaves or servants or you know, there there are no free people left any place that way and then verse 12 the time is surely coming when I shall send you know the, to him the decanters and empty his vessels and break the jars Moab will be ashamed you know and so there, there won't be any hope for the people of Moab, for its leaders, for its uh, any of them. And you know, in verse fourteen, how can you say we are heroes and mighty warriors? Because they're all going to be defeated. You know, there's there will be nothing left. You know, the doom comes swiftly. It says in in verse sixteen, and verse and, and it kind of is broken into sections here. You know, there's you know it talks a little and then. You know, um, you know, going through verse, you know, like one through ten talks about uh, how the enemy comes in and advances, and and it kind of seems to be another break at at verse twenty. You know, tell it by the Arnon that Moab is laid waste, and then you know, verse twenty one starts the judgment has come upon the tableland. You you know, it mentions a bunch more cities of Moab, and. Um, just, you know, nothing is going to be left there. Verse 34, again, Hezbon and Elilah cry out as as far as Jay, and, and a bunch more cities. You know, this this wasn't just a one little small area. There, there was a, a lot of settlements, a lot of towns, and maybe the towns weren't very big. I mean, there's a lot of towns in our part of North Dakota that aren't very big either, but but yet they're there, and, and people call them home. And, but... But Moab will be taken and destroyed and all be taken captive. 
In verse 42, it says, Moab will be destroyed as a people because he magnified himself against the Lord. So, I mean, Moab and Israel had this relationship that kind of teetered and tottered back and forth. You know, sometimes they were um, friendly toward each other and other times not. But Moab often came up against the people of Israel. And, and, and you know, that the end of verse 44, I will bring these things upon Moab in the year of their punishment. You know, there's, and then this chapter ends with, uh, thus far is the judgment on Moab, thus far, meaning there could be more to come. But, you know, there's, you know, in verse 47, I guess I should read all of it. It says, I will restore the fortunes of Moab. And in the later days, says the Lord, thus far is the judgment. So there is, there is a glimmer of hope. You know, I will restore the fortunes. So it's, you know, just like with Israel, with Judah, with Jerusalem, you know, and the Israelites, you know, there will, there will be a remnant that will be brought back. Chapter 49, again, now deals with several different communities, you know, first of ours with the, concerning the Ammonites and, and these, you know, and then verse seven, concerning Edom and um, verse 23, concerning Damascus and verse 28, concerning Kedar and the kingdoms of Hazar, the king Nebuchadnezzar defeated. And, you know, more, more judgments coming against different peoples. And, and I mean, I, I, I've never really, again, tried to keep track of who all of these peoples are and all of these different things, but, you know, they're, they're all, all um, considering, they're all concerned with God and they are all considered by God in, in the punishment that is coming. And, um, you know, so Ammonites start out and then verse three, wail, O Hezbon, for I is laid to waste. You know, I, AI, that was a name of a town again. And, um, you know, it's verse six again is the verse with, with some hope. But afterward, I will restore the fortunes of the Ammonites. Just as he said in verse 47, I will restore the fortunes of Moab. And then he goes on about Edom. And verse 17, Edom will become an object of horror. Everyone who passes by it will be horrified and will hiss because of its disasters. And, um, and then verse 23, again, it talks about Damascus. And Damascus is another city that's it's mentioned several times in the Bible, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. We hear of the town of Damascus. And um, so it's, you know, Damascus and Edom and the Ammonites. In chapter 49 um, ends with, verse 39 says, But in the latter days I will restore the fortunes of Elam, says the Lord. And in one commentary that I read, you know, there was a, a note put in there that, you know, these verses that talk about, you know, the restoration in latter days may have been an editorial comment added by someone at a later date. So it may not have been, you know, they're claiming, you know, something that God had spoken. Uh, or maybe it was hope. Or maybe, maybe that was these things were written down uh, at a point in time after some of these fortunes had been restored. I mean, I have no idea, but regardless if they were added or not, um, when I read them, I see the promise of hope, the promise that all is not lost. And no matter, no matter how bad our lives get, you know, that's one thing we always need to remember that all is not lost. There is hope. There is hope and promise in Jesus Christ.